a number of earnings movers after hours. We've got Chipotle, Snap, and Visa, but one of the biggest movers is Texas Instruments hitting an all-time high in the after-hour session. Let's get to Josh Lipton with the very latest on those results. Hey, Josh. So, Melissa, checked in with Chris Rowland of Susquehanna. Um, here was his take on the quarter. He said, listen, there was pent-up fear heading in, but generally in-line print. He said gross margins were actually better than expected at 64.3%. Q3 co- guidance acknowledges a bit below the street's estimates, but better than feared. First real semi-reporting this earnings season, uh, he says, and it's a decent report. On the call, um, interesting executives giving some historical perspective here. They note they just completed uh, their third quarter of year-on-year declines, and they say cycles are always different, but typically you would see four to five quarters of such year-on-year declines uh, uh, before growth resumes. They're not trying to forecast, they say, cycle, but simply offer some historical perspective there. Uh, They were asked directly about Huawei on the call, and they know that Huawei does represent about 3% of revenue overall for the company. Said over the past quarter, they they had halted shipments when the order was given, but then resumed shipments of products that they determined were in compliance. So things came in as expected. They were asked about 5G as well, so they saw some nice growth in their 5G products. Of course, their rival there is analog devices. Melissa, back to you. Josh, thanks. Josh Lipton in San Francisco and Texas Instruments. Guy, what do you make of Texas? Operating margins, where I looked. I mean, operating margins came in almost 40, a little over 41 percent. The street was looking for 38.8 percent. That's really encouraging. Now, the problem is, in my opinion, if you really look, year-over-year revenue is down, depending on what you look at, analog down 12 percent. Embedded processing down 21%. Again, Street didn't care with Micron. Clearly doesn't care here. The good news is operating margins higher. The bad news is the guide wasn't great. And the other p- thing would concern me is this isn't cheap at now close to 21 and a half times forward earnings. That said, everybody seems to be in love with the semis right now. I'm not sure that all the negative stuff matters. The read through, though, on, from Texas could be okay. valuable. I think I think right. it's I think it's very valuable. And remember, Texan was was kind of the grim reaper um, on, on the last yeah. one. Mm-hmm. So the, you know we were we were we were talking about we were all in the in the dark on what you're supposed to be doing in the semiconductor space. And and if there was one report that really sent the pall over uh, the entire sector, it was this one. And so the fact that, I mean, I think the guide guy was a little bit better than expected, at least. So, I mean, I think people, the street was expecting 138, mid-range of where they, the new guidance has you at 142. That has to be encouraging, again, vis-a-vis where these guys were. Um, let's wait and get more, you know, more news out of the, out of the, the postscript. But I think it's, it's positive. All right. Our next guest called the chip rip back in late May, and now he's back to tell us where the semis are headed from here, plus two more areas of the market prime for a breakout. Time to go off the charts with Chris Verone. Chris, what are you looking at? Hey, Melissa. Yeah, well, let's start with the chips. And what I think is most notable about the semi chart, this is the Sox, basically had 18 months of total indifference. You started to flirt with new highs in March and April. You came right back to support at the 200. And just the absolute ricochet off support to new highs here, I think, speaks to the fact that this is still a secular bull market in chip stocks. And when you look under the surface, what we like in particular, 100 percent of chips right now are above their 200-day moving average. So the internals are still very firm. It reminds us a little bit of this breakout that we saw from the chips coming out of that 2014, 2015, 2016 low where they broke out and went on for another two years. So what else has these characteristics of uh, an improving group, maybe out of consensus? And it brings us to the trucks. And this has been one of the areas of the market. The street's been pretty negative on uh, over the last couple years. We actually see some reasons for uh, improvement here. These are the trucks slowly starting to make some higher lows. When you look internally, again, you have about 80% of trucks actually back above their 200-day average. That's the highest reading we've seen in almost two years. So the internal setup here is getting better. So chips good, trucks improving. I would put banks on this list, or at least I would start to entertain the idea that these banks are starting to improve. And what's been so notable to us over the last number of weeks, even as bond yields took that last leg lower at about 2%, The financials have quietly started to outperform. Over the last four weeks, banks have outperformed the Utes by about 800 basis points. So despite lower yields, a better tone, chips, trucks, banks, we think that's the new leadership starting to really show up here. Chris, why don't you come back over here to the desk? Jonah will bring the chair over, as he does so well. Great job. <laughs> Thank you, Jonah. Sure. Hey, Chris, what's going on? So, Chris, this is really good. I mean, yeah. th- these are indicators, right, for the overall markets. Chips, trucking, banks, banks, come on, right? I think it's more a reflection 
that after four, five, six months of some pretty tepid leadership, the fabric of this market is starting to change a little bit. Now, we can't say that Utes working and Staples working was bearish because the market was up 17% in the first half of the year. My point is, it's just changing where you're getting paid. What was once defensive is now becoming more pro-risk. I think ultimately that's a good thing. It's not just distinct to the U.S. We're seeing it in Europe and we're seeing it in EM. Suddenly these more pro-risk or cyclical groups are starting to take some share here. So these go higher. What yeah. happens to technology? One of the relationships we always look at for message on cyclicality is semis for software, right? That started to inflect here over the last couple of weeks. I think software is ultimately fine, but it's rich. It's overbought, and semis on the meanwhile are starting to reaccelerate uh, out of this base. So I think in terms of playing cyclicality, you're going to get more bang for your buck into the second half of the year owning semis over software. Yeah, Chris, what are your favorite names within semis? Well, the one today, I mean, massive breakout, TXN. You could push this thing up to 150, 160. I would encourage you to look at ASML, Global Bellwether, Taiwan Semi, Global Bellwether, KLA Tencore. These are good stocks that spent 18 months of indifference now resolving higher. So looking at ones that have been yeah. indifferent or bad that yeah. might be too, where do you what do you think of the industrials? You know what? I think what's gone underappreciated over the last couple of weeks, like deers back to the old highs. Caterpillar quietly has a better tone about it. You're seeing it with the trucks here as well. Some of these modest turns, the airlines have broken out. It's hard for us to be too negative when the pie of what's working seems to be getting a little bit better. I'm not sure industrials are leadership yet. But when your laggards have at least stopped going down, that's a better framework uh, than the alternative. So we like the group here. Did you notice, Guy, all the, the chip stocks that Chris likes and the semiconductor index, the big base, the longer the base, the, the higher Yamada. the space. Yeah. He's a disciple of the great sure Louise am. Yamada. Yeah. The, the bigger the, the space. The longer the base, the higher in space. A spinal Tap song. <laughs> Wonderful. No, and he's, listen, kudos to Chris yeah, for that yeah. question. Yes. And Texan absolutely is broken out now above 119. You know, I don't know if it gets to 150, but clearly people are loving this report. Quickly, the airlines do make sense. I know Tim Karam talked about this, but Delta up almost 3% today on what was, you know, decent day. But, I mean, I think that's a pretty impressive performance. And just to add the very, you know, if you look at some of these bank moves, they've gone underappreciated here. Like, U.S. Right. Bank breaking out, there's 28 analysts who cover it. Only seven of them have a buy on it. Huh. These things are underappreciated. Goldman Sachs is waking up for the first time in right. two years. There's money there. Chris, thanks. Good Thank to you. see you. Chris Verone, you. Strategus. And you were noting the bank breakout today. Uh, yes. KBW, or KBE, well, I should say, up 1%. Well, I was looking more at the money centers, which mm -hmm. I look at. Nice to see them slowly creeping up. I thought I heard you say I love Jamie Dimon, but maybe that was me. That I think was it was you. me. But I, I still I like him here. It. You might have said it? <laughs> I think you did. Okay.